of God. Yes. Hallelujah. When I was unlovable, he loved me. Amen. When I was beyond mercy, he still poured out mercy. When I couldn't earn grace, he still gave me grace. Somebody say amen to that. Just look at your neighbor and just tell him grace really is amazing. Would you do that? Hallelujah.
and mine hasn't died off. I don't know about anybody else, but that was an amazing weekend last weekend. And here we're singing the very words, God, you are powerful above it all. That means there's nothing above God that's more powerful than him. Whoa! more powerful than the name of Jesus Christ. The impossible. He's wonderful. He's powerful. Nothing is greater than the, no doctor's report. No zero in the bank account. there's a little discord in the house, it's alright. God is above it all. If there's some sickness in the house, God's still above it all. That's how powerful our God is. And some of you even have a son or a daughter or a husband or a wife that's just on their own path. God's still above that person. God can still bring the prodigal home. God can still bring the husband or the wife back home. God can still restore. And this morning for our revival prayer, we're going to pray for homes and families and marriages this morning. Is that all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up every home that's represented here in this house, around this house, around this campus. And Father, we pray, Lord, have your way in our homes. Lord, we invite you to come, Holy Spirit, and fill the homes. And Lord, we pray for the daughter or the son or even the wife or the husband that has gone and just done their own thing. Father, we ask that you grab a hold of their heart this moment, this day, this minute, this hour, and return them back to you. Not just to us, back to you, Father. Restore. Restore families today. Father, we pray for those homes that are sick today. There is no sickness that is above the name of Jesus. Every sickness must be healed and bow at the name of Jesus Christ. So I declare Jesus over every home now in the name of Jesus. Healing, peace, freedom in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for the other churches in our community. If you know of a pastor, lift their name up right now. If you know of another church name, lift it up now. They're not our enemy. They're, we're not in competition. We're working together for the benefit of the kingdom of God. God, we pray for every house, every church represented in Howard County today that is lifting up the only name, the name of Jesus Christ, and that is preaching salvation today. Father, we pray for your spirit to be with them. Your anointing would be on that pastor, and that you would bless them. Father, we love you and we thank you. In your mighty, precious name, we pray. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. Before you're seated, make sure you greet five people and say you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Good to see your faces today. Glad you came back and joined us. <clears throat> All right, this time, if you'll turn your attention to the screens.
Friday was Veterans Day, and we want to take a moment right now. If you are a veteran of any branch of the military, will you please stand to your feet? Thank you. I know my... Thank you guys for your service. Thank you. I know my brother-in-law, Nick, is around here. He was in the Navy. Thank you guys. Bless you. We appreciate it. Well, at this time, we're, we're grateful to have some friends with us. We got to meet them. Was it last year? Y'all were here, and um, we're happy to have him. I just found out he was coming on Tuesday, so I'm, I'm glad uh, that Grant Bowman is with us. So, Grant, will you come to, to the to platform and preach to us today? We please stand and welcome Grant Bowman to the platform. Hey, good morning, everybody. Amen. Say that one more time like you mean it. Good morning, everybody. Turn to your neighbor and say, you look better here than anywhere else I've seen you. Uh... Sunday mornings, you know, Sunday mornings are just great, aren't they? Sometimes they're not mind over matter, they're mind over mattress. And uh, I hope you're enjoying your extra hour of sleep. How many enjoying that? Thank you, Lord. Awesome, awesome. And uh, you may be seated. Thank you for standing. Uh, wow, what a privilege it is to be back in Big Spring with our friends. Uh, wow, what an honor. Uh, I told somebody this week, it's, it's great to be invited, but it's even better to be invited back. So, so maybe we didn't mess things up too much last time. If we did, I know Pastor Kevin uh, fixed it, but uh, uh, it's truly an honor to stand in this place um, where your pastors stand week after week serving you and sharing with you the word of the Lord. And uh, we just pray for uh, Pastor Kevin, Pastor Michelle's there out of town. We just honor them today. We honor them today. Uh, you never go wrong by showing honor. Never. In fact, God honors you if you'll do that. And so we want to say thank you, and certainly we honor them and safe travels to them. Uh, just a couple of things today. I want to just say it's just great to have my wife with me. She's been my constant companion for um, uh, a very, very long time. Uh, we woke up this morning at the hotel here in Big Spring, and and um, and we, we already knew this, but um, today's our 29th wedding anniversary. 29th. I, I just can't believe she's put up with me. For all these years, to be honest with you, uh, I, I married up big time. I remember uh, kneeling down. Uh, I don't know if guys still do that or not. Do they do that still? Uh, maybe, maybe they. If they don't, they probably should. But uh, I remember kneeling down in the um, Albuquerque, New Mexico airport, um, and asking her if she would marry me. I was so nervous, guys. I'm telling you, I was shaking in my boots. I, I thought she would say yes, so I, I had a kind of good idea, but you never know, right? Uh, so uh, she she said yes, uh, and and then I had to excuse me to go throw up in the bathroom. Uh, and uh, true story, true story. But um, uh, but it's it's just I tell you, uh, God's been faithful through the ups and downs, the good and the bad, and we've got two wonderful children. Uh, that are in church this morning with their spouses in Fort Worth, Texas, and we have three grandkids, one on the way, and uh, I, I'm glad to say, and I'm thankful to say that they're all serving the Lord uh, and involved in ministry and, and just, um, you know, uh, I, I just, in this present day, I, I, you got to get your family in church. I know you can't hog tie people and pull them in, make them do, and all that. I understand that, but but you got to get your family in the church. This is a critical time, critical hour in which we are living. And so, uh, if their family's not here, pray for them. Pray, and I know you do, but continue that. God honors that. God will, as our pastor already said this morning, He's going to continue to reach them, and I believe that they're going to be saved no matter where they're at. God's going to touch their lives. 
Uh, I do want to say thank you for honoring our veterans. This Friday was uh, Veterans Day. Uh, I'd like to say publicly, now he's all gone on to his reward, but my father-in-law served in the Coast Guard. And so I honor him today um, and, uh, and I'm thankful for his service. And all of you that have served uh, um, in, in the military, thank you for helping and making our country what it is today. Thank you for the, the, the life you've lived and, and serving our, and, uh, all of us. And so we appreciate that. And may God bless you today. Um, you know you're comfortable when you bring your own water to the pulpit. That you know you're comfortable. So uh, uh, I'm very again thankful to be here, and I want to I want to kind of um, kind of loop in uh, this last weekend, but 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 not fully. I, I, I know this has been a faith and hope uh, week for you, and and we'll pull on that uh, arena. But I I want to direct your attention, if you will, to Philippians four six. Uh, the Philippians 4, 6, very familiar passage of Scripture uh, this morning. And um, if you have your Bibles, if you'll just follow along, I would greatly appreciate that very much. Um, Philippians 4, 6. The Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. I'm going to be honest with you and transparent with you this morning that uh, I have not always lived up to the creed of this scripture. How I many you would be so bold to raise your hand and, and just declare, I, I, I've, I've worried about a few things. I've, I've had some anxiety about a few things. I think, I think probably we've all been there. We've all have been concerned about our kids and grandkids, about the state of our country, our economy, and our political system, about friends, about work, about money. Can we just be transparent this morning? I think we've all probably looked at the bank account and thought, I just don't see how it's all going to work out. But the scripture tells us not to be anxious about anything, but in every situation, everybody say every situation. That's exactly what it means, by the way. In every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. I like that. I want to talk to you this Lord's Day Sunday morning on this title, Victory in the Age of Anxiety. Victory in the Age of Anxiety. Would you be so bold to lift your voice one more time and let's thank the Lord for his word and let's ask him to speak to us this morning. Lord, we thank you and Lord, we're so appreciative this morning for your word. It is a lamp to our feet. It is a light to our path and Lord, we honor your word today. Make it clear to us as we receive it and be it, let it be a blessing to everyone that hears it and we are so thankful, Lord, for the power of your spirit that's moving even now. In Jesus' name we pray, and let everybody say amen. amen. We're living in a time that someone once referred to as the age of anxiety. It seems that worry has become the watchword of the day. You don't have to turn on the TV and wait too long to find a commercial with a medication that deals with worry and anxiety. No job, we worry. If we have a job, we worry. No money, we really worry. If we don't have any money, we're going to worry some more. If we get sick, we worry. If we're not sick, we worry about the pain, about the, uh, our health. Come to think about it, we almost worry all the time. When I was putting the sermon together, I started to list the things that we worry about. We worry about our jobs and our homes, whether the roof is leaking and the termites are eating. We worry about our cars and does it need oil or an oil change. We worry about uh, the kids and how are they. We worry about their future. We worry about our favorite sports team, and if they're going to win, I think Dallas plays at 3.30 today, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. I worry, I, I worry about them, and they, 
They probably need it. <laughs> we worry about diseases amongst us, and no doubt a pandemic has taught us maybe to worry even a little more. We worry about the public schools and the private schools and the parochial schools and what's being taught there and are our kids okay. We worry about every kind of school, even homeschool. We worry about the electrical grid, we worry about crime and it's on the rise, and we worry about drugs and the economy, and we worry about politics and about foreign relations, and we worry about traffic, and I don't know if it's so much here, but if you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area where we live, I'm going to tell you, you're taking your life in your own hands by driving down the road anymore. We worry, don't we do that? We worry about the weather. Now, we're worried about the climate. We worry about the rainforest and if they're going to survive and about the manatees down in Florida and someone's worrying about the baby seals and the polar bears. We worry about the killer bees and the fire ants and about terrorism, nuclear war. We worry about the volcanoes and the earthquakes and the asteroids and we worry about sunspots and little green men. We worry about the boogeyman and the Sasquatch and something in our food called... MSG. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Can I tell you, most of the things that we worry about never happen. Someone much smarter than me did a study that said only about 8% of the things that we worry about or have anxiety about are legitimate. So that tells me that 92% of things, mom, that you're worrying about Dad, that you're concerned about, that grips you as you're driving down the road, that concerns you when you look at the bank account, that stirs you to worry and emotional stress, about 92% of that stuff's never going to happen. You're never going to have to worry. You really don't have to worry about it. So much so that in the Word of God, 365 times the Bible tells us how to deal with worry, and that it simply says, Fear not. It was the writer Mark Twain that once said, and I quote, I have worried over a great many things in life, the most of which never happen. Studies have shown that most of what we worry about, have anxiety about, never impact us at all. My wife and I were traveling one time in South Texas. Have you ever been to South Texas it's not West Texas like this, but it's South Texas. It's a little bit different. We were preaching at a small church. When we first got started as, as, as our preaching ministry, we, we got invited to a small church. The church had service in a, uh, in a senior living center uh, in the afternoons, and it was uh, midsummer. Uh, they had no air conditioning in, in, in this place in the mid-afternoon uh, at this particular wing of this facility that we were renting. And, or the church was renting, and so we got invited to go down. And if you get invited to preach, you just need to go, even if it's your anniversary, you just need to go and, so, uh, uh, and, uh, and have a good understanding wife. And, uh, and so we got invited to go, and it, it was, it was uh, Sunday afternoon, 2 o'clock service. It was hot. It was South Texas. Uh, uh, and the, everything in South Texas will either sting you or bite you or crawl on you. And, uh, and so I remember driving to this place from, from North Texas, and I, I, I remember thinking in my mind, we need $375 in offering. Because our car payment was due the next day. Now, I don't know if you've ever been concerned about money. Maybe all of you are just wealthy, and if, if you are, I'd like to talk to you after service about a loan. But, uh, but, but for me, I, I was a young preacher, you know, and I was just getting started, and, and some days it feels like I'm still getting started. And, and I, I, was, I said, Lord, and I, and I didn't say this to my wife because I don't want her to worry. I said, we were driving to the church, and I was thinking, Lord, now if we can get $375, it's going to be a miracle. And I got worried. You ever been there? I got a little bit of anxiety. I, I, I got some concern. Because this wasn't a big church. This was a small church. And you know the thing about small church is you don't have a lot of people in a small church. And if you don't have a lot of people in a small church, you don't have a lot of money in a small church. And I'm thinking to myself, there is no way that we're going to get $375 from this church. 
It's going to be a miracle if they take us out to McDonald's afterwards and get a cheeseburger. And, you know, we're evangelists. We're living out of old uh, half-eaten uh, French fries out of the floorboard of our car. And, we're just, you know, we're just barely making it to the next place to preach. And, and we're just, and I'm just thinking, and anxiety set in, and the enemy starts talking. You're not, you're going to, you're going to miss the payment. It's going to affect your credit. You're going to, they're going to come and get your car. You know how the enemy does. He just keeps, he starts talking to your mind. He starts, he starts speaking to you. This is never going to work. You might as well go get a job. Don't, don't preach. Just do something else. And, and, and can I tell you, I think sometimes we need, we need to listen. We need to train our mind to hear God whispering instead of the enemy shouting. Because, my friend, he's shouting. You don't have to turn on the TV very long to understand he's shouting. He's roaring. He'll scream at you to get your attention, to, to, to get you to worry about the next thing, to get you to be concerned about the next issue, to have anxiety about this or anxiety about that. But can I tell you, my God, I love that song that the, that the, the ensemble sing. I, my God is above it all. And can I remind you on a Sunday morning that he can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or even think according to the power that works in us. I'm talking to somebody, you came in here with fear today. You came in here with anxiety today. You're worried about something. You're on edge about the next thing. You're just waiting for the shoe to drop. And that was me. I was, I was waiting for, for it to happen. You know, if you're an evangelist, you wait for that envelope. Afterwards, you've been around the church every now and then. You, you, you know that you, you give an honorarium to the speaker and, 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 and all of that. So we preached. And, and, and man, I sweated like a rented mule in that place. I mean, it was South Texas on a Sunday afternoon. And I'm telling you, the sun was blazing, no AC. I had puddles coming out of my shoes. I was sweating so much. And, 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 and they gave us our check. And we, 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 we drove out. And we got in the car. And we drove out the driveway. And we're already looking in the envelope. If you're an evangelist, you're already looking. And I'm praying, 375, 375, 375, 375. Jesus, if you're, if you're alive, Lord, if you're really up there, if there really is a God, you know, we question that sometimes. You know, we're desperate, Lord. If you, if Lord, you know, you said you never leave us for, nor forsake us, Lord. And uh, Lord, and, and, and you know, we do play all these scenarios in our mind, and, and, and we open the envelope at the, at the edge of their driveway, 300 and seventy-five dollars. Now that's been a long time ago, and it may not mean anything to you. But for a young preacher, it was affirmation in the moment. It was God is able and He will. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He's never going to give up on you. He's going to come. I don't know if it's 375 for you today, but there's something else that might be plaguing your mind today that we need to get a hold of and remind ourselves that God is, God is able and He's going to show up right on time. He's going to come through for you. Turn to your neighbor and say, He's going to come through for you. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. There are words flowing through my mind all the time. Some are good, some are purposeful, and others are not. My mental monologue generally contains too much self-focused and self-defeating babble. This is never going to work out. It's never going to work. I don't know what I'm doing at this job. It's never going to work. It's just, I, that, that pain, again, is probably something bad, so I don't want to go to the doctor. And we tell ourselves these things. We rehearse them in my... Don't we do that? We rehearse them in our minds. They come to us at all hours of the day while we work, while we sleep, while we, while we get ready for the day, while we get ready to go to bed. It's, it's there. It's the constant bombardment of the enemy reminding you it's never going to work out. You're a failure. Who do you think you are? I remember what you did. I remember where you've been. How dare you call yourself a Christian? How dare you stand with your hands lifted up? How dare you go to life church? You, don't, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And the enemy will replay that over and over and over like a movie screen if you allow it. You've got to take dominion. Listen, you've got to take dominion over those thoughts and say, no, I am a child of the Most High God. He is my Heavenly Father. He will never leave me 
And he's never going to forsake me. Why? Because I am the apple of his eye. And if he saved me, he's going to take me all the way to glory. Somebody say amen this morning. You need to learn to talk to yourself. If you're going to get victory in the age of anxiety, you need to be really good at people making fun of you driving down the road. By yourself. In a car. Talking to the Lord. I'm not going to listen to the enemy. I'm going to listen to the word of the Lord. Somebody's mind in here needs a refresher. Because you're on edge. About how it's all going to work out. Let me give you some practical tools this morning. Of how to deal with some anxiety and fear. And if we're living in an age in which that is very, very real. It's this age. It's this hour. Number one. Ask the Lord to guard and direct your mind. Your mind is the place of intellect and reasoning. Our behavior begins in our mind. I'm going to say that again. Our behavior, what we do, begins in our mind. This is the place of spiritual transformation. The writer of Romans said in Romans 12 too, Do not conform to the patterns of this world. But, and you may be able to quote it, Be transformed by the renewing of your what? Of your mind. The writer of Romans was up to something. When he said. Not by accident. But by the spirit. That you need to not be conformed to this world. But allow your mind to be continually transformed. Then he said if you will do that. Then you will be able to test and approve. What is God's will. His good pleasing and perfect will. How many of you have ever battled with what is God's will for my life? How many of you have ever asked the Lord for that? If you've ever struggled with that or need some help in that area, I want to first tell you, you've got to be able to renew your mind. The object of our regular thinking will determine how our days, weeks, years, and ultimately our life will play out. Everything, hear me, starts in the mind. Too often, I simply don't bother to ask for God's protection, direction, and oversight of my mind. I start my day. Can I challenge you to start your day with declaring the Word of God over your mind? Now, Pastor, why are you going this direction? Here's the reason. Because we are dealing with forces in this world that are alive and well and that are doing everything in their power to get you unfocused off of God's word. You with me this morning? Okay, I promise we're going to get there. If he can get you redirected Away from the things of God. It's a victory for him. If he can get you to stay up late at night. Worrying about the bills. Worrying about the kids. Worrying about the future. Anxiety about the job. It's a victory for him. He gloats in that arena. He's excited about that situation. You know why? Because when you get God's people redirected away from the things of God, he throws a party. And can I challenge you in this arena, this world that we're living in now, that has so much media attention, so much time is spent looking at a screen. If he can get you redirected away from the things of God, uh, he will declare victory over your life even though he doesn't have it. He will try to fool you into believing that he's already won a battle that he's already been defeated of. Uh, Back at Calvary, if he can get you redirected, uh, he will declare to you day and night that he's already won even though he's already lost. In short, let me just say it like this. He will lie to you. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be lied to. But the enemy is a master manipulator. He will get you so much screen time that you will think and believe everything that you see is real. Oh, my God. They're going to shut it down again. What's going to happen at the factory? What's going to happen down at the job? What's going to happen to... I was safe last time, but I don't feel safe this time. You following me this morning? I don't know how it's all going to work out. And before you know it, we're sharing that not only in here, but we're sharing it out here with one another. And we're telling our spouse. And we're telling... I'm talking to somebody this morning. We're sharing it out with our kids. And, and you know, you need to save a little more. You're not going to make it through the next pandemic. You need to... Work. Let me tell you something, honey. God... It's never going to leave you nor forsake you. Uh, He's going to take care of you uh, even though you may not feel it. Uh, He's on the right track and He's going to help you stay on the right track if you'll keep your mind stayed on Him. Begin to tell yourself some things like, I am the righteousness of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The blessing of Abraham is mine. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my shield. I am in Christ and he is in me. Everything I put my hand to prospers. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am the head and not the tail. I will lend and not borrow. The devourer is rebuked on my behalf. The Lord is my strong tower. I am strong and courageous. I am the healed of the Lord, etc., etc., etc. Bathe your mind in the word. And when the enemy comes, you won't fall for his trap. Why? Because you've made it your mind's purpose to stand on the word of God. Somebody say amen this morning. Number two, recognize the source of self-focused and self-defeating thoughts. Recognize the source of self-focused and self-defeating thoughts. Given that our behavior begins in the recesses of our mind, my mind is where spiritual transformation takes place. You thought you, it happened in a church service. You thought you, it happened in a prayer meeting. Why you had your hands uplifted. But you can get in touch with God anywhere. I think church is a bedrock of living for God. Listen, I grew up in the church. I grew up in the Pentecostal church. And I, I don't make any qualms about that. I grew up in the Pentecostal church. Listen, I grew up dodging bobby pins and high heels. <laughs> eight days. No, no kidding. Eight days because my mom was the organist and my dad was an usher at the church. Eight days after I was born, I was at church. I remember growing up, Brother Seagraves, I remember digging gum off the bottom of pews and eating it. <laughs> Boy, that's gross. Right? <laughs> you know that was Sister So-and-so, you know, her gum, and she never brushed her teeth, you know. I'm trying to wake y'all up this morning. <laughs> I think you need to have your kids in church. I think you need to come to church. But church isn't the only place that we do warfare. This isn't the only place. The worship service is not the only place that you ought to worship. An F-350 driving down the freeway at 75 miles an hour is a good Christian church. Your Toyota Corolla is a great house of worship. You're, I'm sorry if that offends you about the Ford F-350. My dad drives a... Uh, never mind. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble, Kelly. Uh, we've all been there. We've all experienced periods of mental stress, mental oppression, and it sometimes seems physical. A feeling of heaviness accompanies my self-defeating thoughts. That's designed by the enemy. Eventually, my mind is uncumbered, but it's not because I thought positively enough or talked myself out of that situation. That may work temporarily for us, but that is just a band-aid on a cancer. It's just momentary. 
It won't root out the problem. I know and you know who the enemy is, and it's not your neighbor. It's not that person at work. It's not the situation with the bank loan. Those things are life, and they, listen, they happen to us all. The reality is we have an enemy of our soul, and the way that you defeat the enemy is with the word. How did Jesus defeat the enemy that took him to a high cleft? He defeated him by getting in his face and arguing. Did he bow up his chest and say, I'm the son of God, now bring it on? Did he type out something on Facebook and send it off and say, that'll get him? No. He stood upon the word of God. Every word that proceeds out of your mouth, uh, listen, should be laced, if not directly, should be laced with this understanding that the word is the most powerful thing that has ever been or ever will be. And if I'm going to survive this next decade, next 20, 30, 40 years, I'm going to do it by the word of my testimony. Some of you need to recognize the enemy for who he is. He doesn't want you to get out of this thing alive. Number three, you got to replace self focused thinking with God focused thinking. See, you have a choice, don't you? Listen, I've prayed for people. I have to be honest with you. I've prayed for folks, and I just wasn't 100% that God was going to do what we were asking him to do. Now, I'd like to tell you that every preacher is perfect, and we got it all together, and we're, you know, we we hide our angel wings under our jackets and all, all that stuff, but we don't. And there have been, there have been times in, in, in my life, and maybe in yours, maybe you would agree with this, that we've prayed and we didn't feel anything. Okay, this, we're going to go somewhere. Just here we go. A lot of times we're waiting on a feeling to justify our faith. You, you with me? Okay. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making fun. I'm just saying we're, we're waiting on a feeling. And that, that's going to be the signal. Watch this. That's going to be the signal that God's going to do something miraculous. You know, when you got to get down in your prayer claws. you got to get down right down there. you got to feel it. Listen, you got to cry. I'm just being awesome. Listen, I've been in this thing my whole life. I've seen it all. There's not anything around church that I haven't seen. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Are they recording this? Well, they're never going to invite me back after this one. But I, I'm, I'm just going to tell you. Listen, my wife and I had the privilege of preaching and pastoring in Kentucky for about 10, almost 10 years. And I will just tell you, don't be offended. Kentucky's not Texas. I was born and raised here. Okay. But I, 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 we lived there, and we pastored there. And this did not happen at our church, by the way. It didn't happen at our church. So, so if they quote me, they're lying. It did not happen at our church. But, but uh, you have me remember, the, uh, don't get it. Okay, listen, if Pastor Kevin will fix everything when, I, when he comes back, this, the, you're, no, I'm never coming back again after this, so we're safe. So you'll never see me again, okay? But I, I, we, we were at a meeting, and, 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 and remember those old marches they used to have? Man, sister so and so be on that piano or that organ, brother, brother Seagrave, and man, she'd be banging away at that thing, and that old hair would be swinging, and and, uh, and man, you talking about people were shouting and loving God and clapping, and and you know we do a little Holy Ghost something or another, and and, uh, and 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 they would get out and they'd march. You ever seen one of those marches before? That's powerful stuff, by the way. They would get out and march, and this this lady she started shouting a little bit, getting getting a little excited. Don't let that scare you, by the way. Nobody's going to do that this morning, but but she get a little excited this morning at this, this, uh, this church and. Her slip, she's wearing a skirt, her slip fell off. Okay, 
Now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making fun of her. I'm making fun of the situation, okay? She had a skirt and her slip fell off around her ankles. And, and instead of, now listen, instead of just excusing herself, you know, out the side door and go to the restroom, you know, you know kind of get, you know, get, then, get back in, then get back in the service, okay? She just reached down to grab that thing. And she give it one of these right here. Woo! Okay. I told you I'm never coming back again. So. Man, y'all need to delete that off this, this recording. Okay. But we're, he's plum tickled this morning. We wait for a feeling. Don't we do that? We got to have a feeling. If we don't get the feeling that that means God's not in it, and if God's not in it, it ain't going to work, and I'm wasting my time. Don't we do that? Now, I know some other places they don't do that, but maybe it's just me here this morning. I've done that before. Maybe you can agree with that. I've, I've done that, and I, I've waited for that spark, if you will, that, that, that ignition, that, okay, now we're really going to take off. And we're, here we go. This is the Lord, because I feel that. I feel, I feel something. I don't know what it is, but it's, but it, but it's something. Okay, we're about, to, we're, about to, we're about to hit. Okay, Can I, can I can just be honest with you? And this is just Pastor Grant. So if somebody else, you just do what they tell you to do. But I'm going to tell you something. God doesn't need your feelings to fix your problems. Are you with me this morning? God don't need you to do a little, oh, my Lord, that must be Jesus, for him to, for him to work out your situation with your boss. He doesn't need you to jump around and get that feeling, that emotional surge, if you will, for him to help you with your finances. Can I tell you, some of these things are the most mundane, life-giving, life-living things, and they're normal to everybody, and he doesn't need your emotions for him to engage. Can I tell you, he's already engaged. You can't see it, but it's happening behind the scenes. Right now, God is working on your behalf. Making you in the right place Fixing your problems Helping you Why? Because he can do it And he's going to do it Because he loves you There's somebody in here right, right now You are so on edge About this dilemma With your, with your finances and your job You are like I'm, I'm, I, When I walk into that place I feel the Holy Ghost right now When I walk into that place And go to work It's like It's like Nails on a chalkboard to you, honey. I don't know how this is going to work out. And they're talking about layoffs and things have been tight and all of this, all this uh, transportation issues and the price of diesel. And I, I don't know how it's going to work and I don't know how it's going to work out and, and all of that. And I'm on edge and I'm watchful about what I say and I'm listening for cues from my boss and, and all these things. And it's got you on edge and you've already talked to mama about it. When you get home, hey, we might need to buckle down a little bit. Uh, we might need to pull back on the spending because I don't know what's going to happen down there at the job. Can I tell you, uh, if he's brought you this far, he's not going to leave you, and he's not going to forsake you. I don't care what they do. You keep on doing what's right. Uh, you keep on honoring the Lord with the first, uh, and God will take care of you. <laughs> if he don't come through, he ain't God. And I'm not talking about the way you want it. Because here's what we do. In our minds, don't we do this, brother? We play out how it's all going to work out. Don't we do that? Okay, now. Okay, 2.3 billion. <sighs> on that lottery. If I, buy, if I buy 100 tickets... What are my chances? What are my real chances? <laughs> Somebody from left field won that thing. You believe that? <laughs> left coast. I can't believe that. But we try to figure it out. Can I just throw something else practical out to you? Turn off the TV for a while. Do you know, okay, I know you know this, but do you know how the media makes money? 
The media makes money off of conflict. That's how the media makes money. It sells advertising, and they hope that you will look, click, link, touch, if you will follow, whatever. The reason is they, that it's because they, and if they can do it themselves, they will do it. They'll manufacture conflict for you to watch because it's just cha-ching, cha-ching. Can I give you a little advice? Take a minute and turn that off. Listen to what God is saying. He's not playing games with you. Hear me this morning. He's not faking you out. He's not giving you a head fake so you'll go one way and he's going to go the other. And, and so he'll, 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 you know, you won't get it. You won't win in the end. You're not going to survive this thing. And, and so, so somehow that's all his plan. His plan is for you to be the best that you can be. His plan, listen, was before the foundation of the world, before your mother met your daddy. His foundation was for you to make it and to be an example of him in the earth. That's the God that we serve. Can I tell you, we need to say I'm God I'm directed to you I'm focused on you I got my mind set on you and on your word and on your kingdom and I don't know how it's going to work out I don't know how it's going to work out but I know you're already in my future working it out somebody say amen I'm current I'm, I'm coming to a close hurry Colossians 3 says this one and two if then you have been raised with Christ seek the things that are above I've never, found, I've never found anything above on CNN or Fox News. This is where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. The writer of Romans says it like this in Romans 8 and 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds. Everybody say their minds. Their minds on the things of the flesh. That's day to day. That's... Got to get the kids, got to go to work, got to pay the bills, got to do the stuff, got to be, the, you, know, you know what I'm saying. That day-to-day -day grind, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Finally, brothers, whatsoever things are true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, Think on these things. Everybody touch your, touch your temple right here. Do that little test. Is there anything in there? I don't know. Well, we know there is. Set your minds on things above. Finally, number four. We need to rest in the truth that we are accepted in Jesus Christ. You are His. Let me say that again. You are His. I used to be in the banking industry. My wife and I both were in the banking industry for many years. And... Uh, and, and, and people would come into my office and they, they, they would come in. Maybe their account was overdrawn, you know, something happened and they we were a little negative. And after doing that a while, a lot of times it was ladies that would come in. I, for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe their husband send them in, you know. Okay, you go. Tell them we're, tell them we're I don't know. Maybe not. But they would come in and they would say, oh, I'm overdrawn. Can, I, can you help me well with my, with my overdraft fees? Or, and and I'm, I'm, in, I'm sorry, this thing happened. You know, I had to buy whatever, and, and, and this thing happened. There, there are two things that I learned, or there, something that I learned concerning two things. With, if, you, if you mess with a, a mother's money or her kids, I learned that really quick. I mean, I knew that, but I learned it. It was reinforced I mean, listen, if you, if you mess with somebody's kids, aren't the claws going to come out? Aren't they really? Well, they're not going to do that to my kid down there at the school. I'll tell you what, I'll just walk down there and give them a piece of my mind, and we're just going to deal with it. That teacher better pin back her ears because we're about to rumble up in here. I'll tell you what. <laughs> we don't do that here in Big Spring. We, 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 we just do it right, you know. 
Don't we do that? And you rehearse what you're going to say all the way to the school. I'm telling you what, I'm going to tell them they're a good kid and they'll clean up their room and eat their vegetables. And, and that, well, there was that one time they got in trouble. But that, that was just something else, you know. That was at a family reunion. The kids were down there at the lake and, you know, whatever. And when we get, don't we do that? You know, because every old crow thinks hers is the blackest, don't they? Don't they? You know, and, 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 and you know, we just go, easy, you know, that my kids are perfect. They don't ever make mistakes and, 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 and all. Don't we do that as parents? Because I'm going to tell you what, I got three grandkids and one on the way, and they are absolutely angels. <laughs> don't make a mistake. I got claps on that one. I feel for I think it's for grandmas that gave me some claps on that one. They are, yes. They're perfect. Now, they'll chew on your truck tires, but I'm going to tell you what, they're perfect. <laughs> We, man, if somebody says something, gets aggravated, we, well, we bow up, don't we? I'll tell you what. Now, if we do that as parents, as humans, what do you think the Lord does when the enemy starts telling you lies? When the enemy does you wrong, Sets a trap in your path and you fall in it. How, what do you think that the, that the Lord does? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying he's going to go down to your school and fix your problem, but I can tell you he has the ability to work behind the scenes that the enemy does not have. He's got the ability to fix stuff that you made such a mess of and you're walking in here and you're thinking, I don't, that's never going to work out. I've got, I've got myself in so much debt. I've got myself in so, this mess with my kids, this mess with my family. This thing is a disaster area. It looks like a bomb went off at our house. It looks like this, this World War III is going on in my marriage and, and we give the Lord the whole list. Don't we do that? We give him the whole list of why things won't work out. I'm talking to somebody this morning, and the enemy has tried to trick you into believing that it's never going to get fixed. You're never going to get healed. You're never going to be whole. You're never going to be secure. You're, you, think you're, you think you're worried about your money. You're going to die in old age uh, in poverty. That's what he wants you to believe. I've come today, this morning... For the Holy Ghost to tell somebody that I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed out begging bread. I've never seen, not once, and I've been this, honey, all my lifetime. I told you, from eight days I started in the church, eight days old, I can tell you I've never, ever seen anybody turned away by God when they said, Lord, I need your help. Stand with me this morning. I'm talking about victory in the age of anxiety. I'm here this morning and I don't believe it's by accident. I know your pastors are out of town. I know that we've laughed and we've had a joke or two this morning, but I can tell you this. I don't believe it's by accident that the Lord sent this preacher to remind you that the Lord's got you. Oh, Pastor Grant, you, you don't know. What we're working with is a mess. It, it, it's never going to get fixed. It's just been going on too long. There's too many scabs over that wound, and there's, it's, it's, it's just it's too many years. And, and, and Pastor Grant, you just, you just don't know the depth and the hurt and the, and the disease and the doctor's appointments we've had. I've come to tell somebody, don't give up. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Don't you dare say God can't do it. I've seen the miraculous happen. And so have you. You've seen him come through at the last minute. It's when you didn't think it was going to work. I don't know how. I know it may not be $375 for you this morning. It may be something else for you this morning hear this preacher when I tell you 
that he's going to be right on time for you. He's going to make a way for you. When it seems like there is no way and there's no way out and there's nowhere to turn and everybody's been called and there's nobody to bail you out, he's going to show up and he's going to fix it. And he's going to help you restore the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm ate. When you live right as living and you threw it away and you gave up. And for months and years you turned your back. Let me tell you something. Not once, not one day did he turn his back on you. He was waiting on you. I'm asking you this morning to bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. I know... I know we made a hard right turn there. I'm sorry. But I'm not going to apologize to remind the people of God that their God is able. And He's going to show up for you. And He's going to bail you out. No matter how big the mess and how deep the problem and how how bad it looks. And oh, Brother Philip, Pastor Grant, this thing is bad. It's never going to work out. It's never going to work. And you've been telling yourself that for a very long time. Can I remind you on this Lord's Day Sunday morning that our God, our God, specializes in messes and tragedies and in brokenness. Would you pray with me? Would you take whatever is on your mind right now? Would you separate everything else, your family, your friends, What's going to happen tomorrow, the ball game, the whatever? Would you take whatever's been plaguing you and would you just take it to the Lord one more time? I don't care if you don't feel it. You don't have to feel it. It doesn't have to be an emotional thing for your faith to engage. To say, Lord, I believe that even though I'm bringing you a basket of problems, a bucket of mess, I believe I believe you're going to work it out. I believe you're already working it out. You're already fixing it on my behalf. Would you pray with me this morning as as they begin to play and sing? Would you just go to the Lord with me? Lord, I'm praying for somebody this morning that they've put on a good facade. The face is perfect. But deep down, There's a war that's going on. I don't know how. I don't know how they came in here. They look so good. They're dressed so right. Their faces got a smile on their face. But deep down inside, I don't know how. I don't know how even they got out of their car this morning. Lord, I'm asking you as they take that situation one more time to you. With just the last measure of faith that they've got, with one more push, I'm asking you, Lord, to meet them right here, right now at Life Church in Big Spring, Texas, one more time, and remind them that you are on their side, that you got them, that you're going to take care of them, that you're going to help them fix it, that you're going to help them work it out. It may not look exactly like they want it, but God, you're always going to show up. You're always going to make a way because that's the kind of God that we serve. And somebody say, in Jesus' name, amen. Would you clap your hands one more time to the Lord? available after the end of service when we're done. Just have some folks at the front to pray for people and Grant and Kelly have asked just to stay behind if just for a little bit just to pray with some folks. So if you need some prayer for whatever it is, make sure you come and see those folks up at the front after service. Uh, that ministry team will be ready at the end. Well, we want to welcome all of our guests this morning who are listening on the radio, Facebook, right here in the house. We're thankful that you're here. 
Just like Grant said, Pastor Kevin and Pastor Michelle are enjoying some time off, and so we're praying God's blessing and strength be upon them. And if you're visiting for the first time, or this is your second time, or maybe you're just, now it's time, you're ready to connect, I want to encourage you to fill out, there's a connect card in the seat pocket in front of you. If you'll take a moment just to fill that out, I'd be happy to connect with you later this week. And then also on the back side of that is an opportunity for you to list any prayer requests or praise reports that you have. We pray for those requests every Monday morning at our staff meeting and celebrate those reports, praise reports with you. And so if you have one, please fill that out. We'd be happy to pray for you and celebrate with you. We also want to say thank you on behalf of our senior pastors. Thank you so much to all the volunteers last week that helped make a weekend of faith and hope an amazing weekend. We had our dream team volunteers in the front, out in the kids area, right here in the sanctuary. So thank you to all of those that served last week and helped them make it a great, successful weekend. We're going to be introducing uh, something new this year, a baptism class. We want to introduce that. And so next Sunday after service, Pastor Mark and I will be teaming up and be doing a baptism class Uh, Just for a few moments, just giving people an understanding of what baptism is. And there is some, there is a requirement. You just can't call the church and say, hey, my son or my daughter or I want to get baptized. We're going to ask you, do you even have Jesus in your heart? That is one of the requirements. And so we want to give that information to give you some understanding of what baptism is all about. So if you're interested in getting baptized, please come to that class next week or see me after service. And then the baptism Sunday will be the the first Sunday of the next month right after that. So December 4th, I think it is, um, is our, yes, December 4th will be the next baptism Sunday. But in order to get baptized, you have to go through the baptism class. So see me after church if you want to be a part of that class. All right, ushers, I need you to grab those uh, postcards for me. Ladies, if you'll raise your hands. Some of you ladies are not raising your hand. Ladies, raise your hand. Please, ushers are handing out an invitation to this year's annual holodazzle. And for you men, for a fee of $20, you can sit in the balcony with your popcorn and watch these ladies battle it out for the next amazing Christmas tree ornament. This is the One Sisterhood Holodazzle event. It's going to be taking place right here in the church sanctuary, Friday, December 2nd. Um, On the back side of it, it tells you, bring a friend, bring a wrapped ornament, bring a favorite finger food, uh, dish, savory or sweet. And the color theme this year is red, pink, green, or teal. So take this, put it on your refrigerator. And if you need an additional one, head to the kiosk or some additional postcards and take that and invite someone with you on the second. It's going to be a great evening of some food, fun, and fellowship. This coming Saturday, Katie Rubio is going to be hosting a Revelation Wellness Meetup over in our Life Kids building. That's going to be from 9 a.m. to noon. If you who need some more information, please see Katie right after service and look for that email coming up this week. We'll give you some more information. All right. How many of you are ready to give this morning? Five of you are ready to give this morning. How many are ready to give this morning? Amen. Our ushers will come as we prepare to receive our tithes and offerings. pray for the offering. Father, I thank you again for this group of faithful sons and daughters. Lord, as they give this morning, I pray that you bless them for their obedience. And God, that as they go on this week, that they would just be reminded of this word that was spoken this morning and that you are still above everything that's happening. That we can we can squash this anxiety and worry with the word. And Lord, I pray that your, your children will remember your word this week as they give. Bless your people. In your name we pray. Amen. Go ahead and give this morning.
I'll just give a little quick update. We had um, a Jubilee Gang stay over with us this past week, Monday and Tuesday. And we had um, through Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesday night, we had a total of 20 kids make a decision for the Lord. So we were super excited about having them and look forward to having them again soon. So they're a great, great team to have with us. All right, well, if you'll join me this morning in our declaration, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your prayers. May the Lord give you increase more and more for you and your children. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. All righty. Before you go, the, those that are been asked to be on our ministry team, if you'll just come to the front, Kelly and uh, Grant will be up here as well up at the front. Please come up for some ministry if you need it. And church, remember, you are loved. Have a blessed week. We love you. It's been fun.